Hi guys, so today I wanted to do a quick little video and show you guys how I edit all of my photos for Instagram, for social media, for my blog, to keep a really consistent brand and a really consistent style for all of them. I love watching these type of videos and seeing other people's editing tips and how they get a cohesive feed. Um, it's something that I really love doing, editing these images, and I think it's something that a lot of people, when they're building a business or a brand, they kind of put on the back burner, and it can make such a big difference if you have a really cohesive look to all of your images and people can kind of see your style and your aesthetic really quickly when and they look at your social media. So I'm going to show you guys the different apps that I use and my process. I'm going to take you through two different photos and just show you kind of the different steps that I do for different types of images. P.S. You can follow me on Instagram. My handle is just at Cassie Dalworth and then I also have a business dedicated Instagram if you're interested in my branding work and that's just Rue Design Co. So you can follow both of those if you aren't already. So let's go ahead and jump into the video now. Okay, so I'm going to show you a few of my favorite apps first and just walk you through how I edit. So I have this folder that's called Photos and I don't have too many apps. I kind of got rid of a lot of them and I only really use a few. So I use Planoly to make sure my feed looks really good and I'll go into that later. I use VSCO or ViscoCam, that's one of my favorite editing ones, and then Snapseed is another great one for a few specific reasons. So I normally go into VSCO first, and then you press that little button, and then you can add your favorite photos or whatever you wanna edit. So I'm gonna go up to favorites, and I'm gonna show you how I edit that one, and one of myself, this one. So you just press that and then you can see them in here. And you can see I've already edited this flower one, but I just wanna take you through the whole process. So one thing that I will say is really helpful about this app is that you can copy and paste edits. So for example, I like to keep all of mine obviously in the same few filters, the same kind of style. So I can go to like this photo and click on it. And then you press the little dots right here and click copy edit and then I'm going to paste them onto this and that'll just be a really easy starting point. So I'm going to click this one, click little dots, copy edit and then I'm going to go up here and paste edit and then you can see it changed just a little bit. And so it's obviously not still perfect but that gives me a good starting point for which sorts of things I like to change. So in here I have a few favorite filters. I used to use the HB, um, a lot of the times HB1 and HB2, but now I've kind of switched over to using A6. This one's normally my favorite. And so I'll kind of go and put this on here um, pretty high, maybe like an 8. This really just kind of brings up the white and makes it look a little bit less yellow toned. So I think I'm going to put that there about 9.5 and I can always go back and edit it later. And then I'll go into the edits and I like to up the exposure normally. And so I'm going to put that up about 2. And then I normally take the contrast down just a little bit. And then I like to go over to temperature and I normally take this down a little bit so it's more blue. So about a 1. And then I like to do the tint in the skin tone. Even if I don't have actual skin in the photo, I just like the way that that looks. So I'll do the tint and I like to normally take this one up a little bit so that the photos are a little pinker, obviously not that much, but just a little bit, maybe like a 1.7. And then the skin tone I'll kind of change depending on the photo, if it's looking too yellow or too green. So for this one, I think I'm going to put it down because that's giving the flowers a little bit of a bluer white color, which I like. And this one doesn't change a lot, so I'm going to put that down pretty far at a 4.5. And then I think this actually needs to be just a little bit brighter still because of that darkness in the background. So I'm going to up the exposure a little bit more and then go back to the filter and kind of play around with that. So I think I like this a little higher. And then the last thing that I normally do 
is the Clarity tool. Now you can use Sharpen or Clarity, but I really like the Clarity one um, because I think it just adds a lot more texture to the photo. So I'm gonna pull that up pretty high, like a 5.5. And then I also just like to add a tiny bit of grain sometimes. So like a 1.5, you can't even really see it, but it adds a really pretty kind of almost vintagey filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And then you can see that's pretty close to what I had, the original one. So from here, you can edit more if you need to, or you can just save it out. I always do save to camera roll and then actual size because I don't want the photos to be smaller. Um, I like to keep them as big as possible. So I'm gonna show you on this photo how I edit and I'm just gonna do it fully from scratch. So this photo is one that I have of me. Um, it's pretty dark, just the original photo. So the main thing that I wanna do is lighten it up, give it a little bit more of a blue tint and then I like to use the skin tone to make my hair look um, more red. So I'm gonna start with A6 and you can see that it fully saturated, it kind of ups the contrast and it makes everything look a little bit stronger. So I'm going to put this at like a 9 for now and then go into the exposure and up that and I am pretty pale so I can't do the exposure too high but that is something that I will fix in Snapseed in a little bit so I'll show you that one too. But I'm going to up the exposure to about a 2 and then I'm going to go over here to the temperature put that down just a little bit. This one isn't too yellow, so I don't need to do it a lot, just a tiny bit. But then I like to do the tints so that it's a little bit pinker, just a tiny bit. I don't want it super pink. Just a little bit, and then the skin tone. So this is my favorite because if I put it down, it makes my hair look like this really pretty red color. And if I put it up, it gives my hair more of like a golden blonde color. So I'm gonna put it down. I like my hair to have that dark red color and then it also makes my skin look um, a little bit healthier because the exposure can kind of wash me out. If you're tanner than me, you won't really deal with that problem. Um, and then I'm just going to go to clarity and up the clarity a little bit so that it is stronger. So I really like how this looks, but I wish that this outside part was a little bit lighter because it's kind of a dark gray color. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to save it to my camera roll and take it into the other app. So Snapseed is what I like to use if I need to whiten something. So a lot of people use Facetune when they're trying to whiten something, but I really like Snapseed because it's kind of like Photoshop on your phone, and so you can get more precise, <laughs> sorry, Instagram, you can get more precise edits. So you just tap here, and then you can open whatever photo. I'm just going to go to my camera roll and click this one that I just saved. And so you click this little editor down here and there's tons of options. The ones that I use most often are Tune Image. The brush one is really good for upping the exposure in certain places and the selective tool. So the selective tool I'll show you first. You click a spot and then you can drag with your fingers and it kind of that shows you where it's going to edit and then you can edit that area. So I normally up the brightness and then put the saturation down. And then you can click the little plus arrow down there and get another corner or whatever spot. So like I could use this to do my t-shirt and you can see how it kind of selects like all of a similar color. So it's selecting all of the white from my t-shirt and I could up that brightness, um, which I'll do just a little bit. And then you can save it from there. Whoops. And so you can keep kind of adding these little dots around everywhere. So like I like I like to do this, add little dots and up the brightness, put the saturation down until all of the background is kind of brighter like how I want it. You just kind of have to keep playing around with them until you get all of the areas that you want. The problem with this is that sometimes it'll, like if I put this too big, it'll start to get my face in it. And so another thing you can do is the brush, which works if you're trying to be a little more precise. So you can do any of these changes. I like the exposure. And then you can turn on the eye down here to see where you're doing it. And you just brush over the photo. And wherever it's red is where it's 
doing that thing. So if you turn off the eye, you can see that that's all getting a lot brighter. And you can just kind of brush around everywhere that you want to brighten. And you can zoom in and get like really precise around these areas. And then if you kind of, if like I went over myself like that and I didn't want to brighten myself, then you can just go to the eraser and erase that off. And so you can kind of just brighten certain areas. This is more similar to what you can do in Facetune. But I like this one. I feel like it's a little bit more precise. And I like that you can see where you're doing it. And there's also different levels. So like I can do the exposure at one and go super bright, or I can do it at 0.3 and go a little brighter, but not fully. So I normally like to do mine at 0.7. And that just brightens up all of the background. It doesn't look super fake. You can kind of see where I've brightened it. So I got my shirt here. I'm gonna erase that a little bit. You can kind of just keep playing around with it until you like the final product. I still have some on my face. And then you can just save this. And then you can always go to tune image and up the brightness. Um, you just drag your finger up and down like this and here's the menu. So the ambiance is a really good one to kind of give you a more contrasted color. Um, you can take the shadows up and down. You can take the warmth up and down so it's more blue. Um, so you can kind of really play around with it. But I like this. It just gave me a brighter white background. Then you can save and you have two options. Either save on top of the photo or you can save a copy. So I like to save a copy and then it's <laughs> and then it's in your photos. And you can see the difference between this is from VSCO and this is from Snapseed with the background a lot brighter. So I still look the same, the colors are still the same, but the background's a lot brighter. So that is how I edit things. The last thing that I wanted to show you was this tool that I use. If you are into social media, you might have seen this. So I'm just going to show you really quick. So this lets you plan out when you're posting different things on Instagram. You connect your account and it automatically pulls all of the photos that you've already posted. And then you can upload photos that you're wanting to post and you can drag them around and make sure that everything's organized in a way that's really nice. Um, and so this is great. Like I like to keep photos with a white background kind of spread out from each other so that it doesn't look weird and I can move them around and see what order would be best to post. I used to do this in VSCO camp but I like this one because you can move things around and you don't have to like re-upload things when you want them in a different order. Here you can just swipe it around. And then you can um, add photos that you just edited down here with the upload button or if you're ready to post a photo you just click on it and select post and then it'll go straight to your Instagram. So this is really good because when somebody goes to your Instagram they're going to see all of your photos that have been posted recently and so you want this whole section to just be really cohesive and not have the same type of photos too close to each other. I like to spread them out like I said. So this is free. You can upgrade to a paid account, but I just use the free version and it's really great. So that is everything that I do for my Instagram. I like to keep it pretty simple, but those are the favorite apps that I use to edit pretty much everything. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that you maybe learned some things. The biggest thing I'll say is that you should just play around with it. I still go back and forth sometimes where I'm like, oh, I want my feed to be a little darker or more blue based, or I want my photos to be brighter and airier. And so I kind of go through phases where I'm just playing around with different filters different editing styles, different types of photos that I upload. And so you can definitely play around with it and just see what you like. And you can take examples from other people, but just you have to find your own sort of style. You can't just copy somebody else's. But I think that's true for any sort of creative work. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up so that I know. And I have another kind of photo editing based video coming out soon. That's part of my more than a logo series. So make sure to keep an eye out for that. But until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye. Difference between you and me, we're one and the same. The way we 